So I platinum the Division 2 and boy oh boy was this a nightmare. I mean the game is fun, it's enjoyable and even more so when you're playing with your friends which is what I did for a vast majority of the game. But if you're like me and you're going for that platinum, be prepared to have a meltdown. There's bugs, there's RNG and there's things that lock you out of nearly all vanilla game trophies and if you're not careful you can easily find yourself having to create a new character to get the remaining trophies. Yes, I am speaking from experience but we'll get into that later. PSN Profiles rates this Platinum Trophy difficulty a 4 out of 10 and that it should take roughly 50 hours to complete. Now to Platinum this game, I've broken it down into a few steps, but because of the nature of this game, it's going to be more of a rough guideline than something that I will strictly follow. Step 1 is to finish the main story and get to World Tier 5, allowing us access to most things that the game has to offer, unlocking all trophies linked to the main quests, and unlocking any miscellaneous trophies that I can along the way. Step 2 is to then go back through the game, replaying all the missions on hard difficulty, and again unlocking any miscellaneous trophies that I can. And finally, step three is to, you guessed it, finish off any remaining trophies that I have left. These will likely include the more grindy trophies that involve collectibles, the multiplayer, and fully upgrading our specialist. Now that that intro is out of the way, let's get this platinum. We start by creating our character, and like every game that has this feature, I spend a little bit longer than actually needed creating the perfect specimen. Happy with the results, we start the game. The game starts 7 months after the Green Poison outbreak and I along with several other Division agents are defending the settlement from a bandit attack. Like most games, the prologue gets us used to some of the controls and gives us a taste of the game's combat. Isaac, the Division advanced AI, suddenly shuts down and we receive a distress call from Washington DC asking any spare Division agents to aid in repelling an attack from a large group. We then decide it's best if I go to help, so we travel to DC, we spend the next few minutes taking in the scenery and gunning down enemies and eventually we reach the White House. We meet Manny Ortega who gives us a rundown on the situation and tasks us with liberating the city from the various groups and bringing Isaac back online. At this point I am free to explore the city and complete any missions. So me and my friends grouped up, travelled to the theatre settlement, met with Odessa Sawyer and were shortly given our first group of missions to complete. We began by heading over to the Washington Hotel to rescue Odessa's daughter Eleanor. Now the hotel had definitely seen better days, so I took this as the opportunity to live out my dream as an urban explorer. I snapped a couple of pics of me and my friends, and we unlocked our first trophy of the game, the For Posterity Trophy. Continuing up through the hotel, we cleared each floor leaving no survivors until eventually we made it to the roof. Turns out a hyena by the name of Saint was keeping her hostage. We quickly send him to hell and rescue Eleanor Sawyer. We complete the mission and unlock our second trophy. While making our way over to our next mission, we slide across the hood of a car and we unlock another trophy. Continuing on with the main story, we eventually end up at the American History Museum where our objective was to breach the True Sun stockade and extract valuable interrogation data. We make our way through the museum and it brought more to the table than just some cool things to look at, as it actually had functioning exhibits. We extract the data we need, we kill Captain Briggs and unlock another trophy. No more contacts, all clear. You just recovered intel, it's gonna be a whole lot of help. We then join a clan for the Strength in Numbers trophy. And then we head over to one of the numerous control points located around the map. Control points are locations scattered around DC that we can liberate and allow friendly militia to move in, thus increasing their presence in the surrounding areas, as well as using them to upgrade our base of operations. However, our goal here was to complete the control point without anyone in the group getting downed for the Group Therapy Trophy. We then end up shocking an enemy medic by shooting their defibrillator. Not gonna lie, I'm not entirely sure how I did this as I'm certain I never shot his defib, but I won't say no to a free trophy, so... We then continued through the story, seizing control of another museum, re-establishing the Shade Network, discovering what the hyena stole from Air Force One, 
I look forward to working with you once you get back. And then ended with shutting down some outcast activity. Great job in there. We've been analyzing the data, and it looks like it's going to make Kelso very. Throughout the game we come across many different types of collectibles and in a way one of these are blueprints. Now these blueprints allow us to craft new gear, be it weapons, armor or mods. And one of the many ways that we can obtain these new blueprints is by completing projects for settlements. Of course this is just one of the ways there are loads more like completing side missions, completing shade missions, etc etc. Most of these projects usually consist of donating materials, but some can also require you to go and do specific activities in certain areas. And after doing some of these projects, we end up unlocking the Crafty Collector Trophy for owning a total of 20 blueprints. And a couple of minutes later, we unlock another trophy for completing a project for both the theatre and campus settlements. Next we use our skill points to purchase and use the final skill which unlocks us the King of the Skill Trophy. We again continue on with the remaining main missions that we have left, completing some of the miscellaneous trophies along the way. We also end up clearing the three strongholds that serve as the main base of operations for the three factions around the game that we've been fighting. We do this with the hope of liberating and bringing some kind of peace to DC, so here's a compilation of some of those trophies for you. Now that we have this strategist, the outcasts are going to be in disarray. With the equipment Maya recovered, we can restore the Shade Network across the entire country. The outcasts are going to be much less of a problem than before. You know, the Capitol building is our final target. It's ripe for the picking. Let's do this. Celebrate! After clearing the final stronghold, we advance to World Tier 1 where we discover that our efforts were unfortunately all for nothing. The Black Tusks, a large private military organization, invade Washington DC, taking over previous enemy faction strongholds and establishing a new one. In order to complete the new Tidal Basin stronghold and push out the Black Tusks, we must first complete the previous three strongholds again, this time invaded by Black Tusks and consisting of slightly different objectives. However, before doing that we head back to the White House, go to the Quartermaster and we get to choose our first specialization, unlocking us another trophy. Now guys, this is where me and my friends made a huge mistake, and if you're about to do something like this in your run, please stop right now. This seriously added so much time onto an already longish game, and I can't lie, when this happened I was almost tempted to put the game down and give up on it. You see, we wanted to start the Warlords of New York DLC so we could level up to level 40. It said that we would be locked out of some trophies, but like idiots, we didn't really do any proper research into this and just assumed it was for completing the main story, getting to level 30, stuff like that. Something that we had already done anyway. So we accepted the boost and started the DLC. It was only when we actually got into the DLC that we decided to properly look at what exactly we was getting locked out of before realising we had right boxed it up. I mean we was getting pretty much locked out of nearly most of the main trophies that we were still missing. Some of them we could still get, but a good majority we were getting locked out of. So that means that the 20 or so hours that we had just put in was basically for nothing. So then it began, the long grind back to where we were. This probably took us about another 20 or so hours, but we eventually beat the game and got back to level 30. While progressing back through the game, attempting to complete all main missions on hard, we went for more of the miscellaneous trophies. Requesting backup. Serious trauma detected. Shoot. Let him let 
Also, because we were in a group, this made getting the Dark Zone specific trophies a lot easier as well. Entering safe room. Extraction call. An agent is no longer in your group. Nearby agent has become rogue. Rogue agent detected. Rogue agent neutralized. Hilo is returning to base. Contaminated gear detected. Eventually, after many, many hours, we make it to our final mission that I needed to complete on hard difficulty. Not gonna lie, at this point it actually felt like a weight had been lifted off my shoulders. This is mainly because I decided it was a good idea to go for this trophy when I was on well tier 5, and at some points where at times I didn't have anybody to help with clearing ads, it did prove somewhat difficult. I mean, they do a hell of a lot of damage, and being out of cover for even a few seconds can be the difference between staying alive and having to wipe and start again from the checkpoint. We eventually complete it though, and with it, we unlock the Hard as Nails trophy. And with that, the majority of the game was now complete, and all that we had left was a couple of the multiplayer trophies and a few of the more grindy trophies. For the multiplayer trophies, it was simple enough. The first trophy was to come up against another clan in multiplayer. Now to me, and I assume many others, this would seem that I would also need to be with a group of my clan members. But after entering a game solo, we unlocked the trophy. Neutralize all enemies before you run out of reinforcements. The final multiplayer trophy was to win a match of skirmish or domination, and I was hoping to get this done in the same game. However, me and the rest of the team proceeded to get absolutely destroyed by the opposing team. I wouldn't mind, but this game mode is supposed to have normalised stats, meaning gear doesn't actually matter, but this doesn't seem like the case to me. I decided to give it one more attempt and went into my second game. This time it went a hell of a lot better than before. Granted, I still felt like the stats wasn't necessarily normalised, but it felt a hell of a lot more equal than the previous game. Me and the team go on to win the match and I unlock the first Amon Equals trophy. Now, three trophies were all that stood in my way to get in the Platinum. The first one of these trophies we went for was the Suit You Sir trophy. This trophy requires us to collect any suit of cards in the open world, and there are 13 cards in a suit. Each card is linked to an open world boss that you have to find and kill, and depending on what faction they were in will depend on what card suit you get. I chose the Hyena, so I was going to be going after a suit of spades. Now there are various spawn points around the map, although I chose to farm two, maybe three locations specifically. The thing that makes this trophy extremely grindy is that when you kill the world boss, or if you die to them, in which case you don't get the card, you will have to wait 30 minutes before another one will spawn. And even then, it might not be the faction you are looking for. This then meant I would have to fast travel somewhere else and back in order to change the boss, and hopefully get one in the correct faction. And that's if the game doesn't decide to just straight up despawn them and not spawn anymore for another 30 minutes. This took me hours, and I mean hours. It was so monotonous and it only got harder the less that I had to collect. I even tried joining other people's worlds and had absolutely no luck. Eventually though, after a not so fun way in game, we unlock the trophy. The next trophy we went for was the Taste of the Exotic trophy, and this requires us to craft an exotic weapon or item. I originally went for the Kendra's Liberty exotic pistol, but after obtaining the parts I needed, I realised I didn't have a high-end D50, so I couldn't craft it. I tried for a couple hours farming for one, but couldn't get one to drop, so instead got the parts needed for the Lost Chatterbox exotic SMG, and crafted that, unlocking us the trophy.
Now, there was only one trophy remaining. We needed to obtain enough specialization points in order to invest a total of 165 points into our chosen specialization, mine being the minigun. There are multiple ways you can earn these points, but the easiest ways to get them are through settlement projects, leveling up, daily missions, and completing bounties. I ended up spending most of the time doing bounties, as these would typically offer 3-5 to five points depending on the difficulty level, and I'd also get a decent amount of XP from completing the bounty itself, allowing me to level up rather quickly. This still took me a long time though, as after you complete a bounty, there is a cooldown on that specific one before you can get more points from it. This meant I couldn't just rinse and repeat the same bounties, and often found myself waiting around for a little while for the cooldown to reset so I could earn more. Like with most other trophies, this took me a few hours, but we eventually obtained enough points to max out our specialization, unlocking us the best of the best trophy, and of course, the Platinum Agent Platinum Trophy. And with that being the end of the game for me, this is also the end of the video for you guys. Now, here's my thoughts on this game and its platinum before we end the video. This game, at its core, is a fun experience, provided you are playing with friends. Of course, some people would prefer to play solo, and that's perfectly okay, but it is definitely a game intended to be played with others. The locations are interesting, it doesn't feel like there's a lot of copy and paste, and really leaves a lot of locations feeling completely unique. The combat is fun, there's a vast amount of weapons and gear to choose from, and each with their own stats and sometimes bonus perks or talents. There's a variety of different abilities at your disposal, although I found myself running a drone and shield for the majority of the game. The story, if I'm being brutally honest, I didn't really care for. Not that it's bad, because it's not. It's actually really interesting once you start looking deeper into it and you pay a lot more attention than I did. But again, not something I really cared for when playing this game. Would I recommend this game to Platinum to anyone else? Absolutely, if you have a group of friends to go through it with. If you're intending on doing the whole thing solo, apart from obviously the multiplayer trophies, it's something that personally I'd probably pass up on. Anyway guys, this is the end of the video. If you enjoyed it and would like to see more content like this, please consider hitting that like button and sharing this video around. It really helps me out with the algorithm, it shows your support and your support is always appreciated on my channel. Let me know down in the comments below what game you're currently working towards the Platinum on. I'd absolutely love to see what the community is playing. And of course, if you've made it this far and you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn notifications on. That way you'll be the first to know when a new video goes live. I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you all in the next video.